What up, players? It's Warboss to open this mug. Let's paint this Death Rider. Death Corps of Krieg, Forge World model. Start with some ceramite white, and that's just basically as a undercoat for the horsey. Oh, look at my hairy hobbit hands. And then a seraphim sepia. These are in no order, no particular order. Lead Belcher. I think at this point I'm just looking for the paints that I have around Dryad Bark, Agrax Earthshade, which you can see drying right now in the folds of this guy's uniform, Doombo Brown, Balthazar Gold, Corn Red, Caliban Green, Come Mr. Caliban! Steel Legion Drab. The Fang. Russ Gray, of course. This is just the standard Death Corps Creed uniform colors. Abaddon Black. Mornfang Brown. And uh, for the saddle blanket, you can see that that is a Stegodon st scale green. And there we go, thumbs up! So this is part one of how to paint a Death Corps of Krieg Death Rider. Yeah, I guess he counts as a Rough Rider for your Astro Militarum armies, and uh, unless you're using the Death Corps of Krieg siege list rules. Now, my uh, the guy that I got this from originally, ooh, White Scar. White Scar or Ceramite White, either or. He had them all, uh, all of these models, when he sold them to me, he had them kind of painted, um, shaded a little bit with se Seraphim Sepia. I decided to go back though and show you from the very beginning. If I were to take this model and just uh, primer it, get it ready for paint. So um, I actually just went over it with, I think, White Scar and uh, Ceramite White will work. I think I. I had mistakenly thought it was Ceramite White there in the intro. Um, and you just let that dry. Make sure that when you paint it, paint that white on, or when you primer your undercoat your horse, th this would be a model that I would prime in white, specifically because we're going for the kind of blonde horse color. So once your horse is ready for painting, we're just taking the Seraphim Sepia and we are spreading it around. And you can really see all the great detail with the veins and the uh, vertebrae for the back there. And we're just trying to get it evenly distributed. You don't want it too, uh, as always, with every single thing we ever shade. You don't want the shade wash colors to pool in any of the resources. <laughs> recesses. Oh my gosh, I'm so tired. And um, So we are just trying to spread it around and um, if anything we're letting gravity pull the shade down into the lower areas but uh, the tricky thing is you don't want it to uh, run with too much of the other shade and then just kind of pool at the bottom in the hooves. It's um, very easy to do with such a large surface area like we're working with right now and especially because we're using the shade to be our primary color. So another thing that'll help to really mix the pigment in the shades is to really give your paint pot a good shake before starting this. And we're getting all of the areas here. And you'll see that there are, like right where the blanket, the horse blanket under the saddle kind of meets the, the skin, there's a little bit of shading right there, a little bit of a shadow right there. So you wanna make sure you've got some of the wash just lining that area. And uh, another tricky spot is if you're using the entrenching tool which you should be doing when you glue this model together, uh, getting it under the underside of the horse's belly is really super important. Okay, again, we're just 
uh, spreading the shading around, spreading the wash around, making sure that it's in all of the all of the grooves and all of the recesses in the skin. So now we're going to take the fang and we're going to go to a completely different area of the model. We're going to give the wash some time to dry and we're going to paint the great coat with the fang. Now I'm actually starting by, you can kind of see where the great coat fans out behind the rider where he's sitting. And um, that's a tricky thing if you don't know what it would look like to have a long coat and where it would bunch up and where the cloth would be. Um, you don't want to mistake it for a different colored article of clothing or a different part of the um, of the accessories on the horse. So just kind of double check that you know which part of the, this kit is the great coat and you want to make sure that you glue it on accordingly and paint it on accordingly rather uh, this is a fantastic model again forge world really just amazing it's, i find it hard to believe and now i'm painting on the uniform sorry the focus is so bad i'm trying i find it hard to believe that the the designers forge world did this range the death core of Krieg range and made them so amazing and really just evoke that World War One aesthetic and then uh, they tried their hands and did another range the Elysian Drop Troopers and they almost seemed like where the Death Corps of Krieg is so iconic with the gas masks and the great coats and and um, all of that the Elysian Drop Troopers basically look like um, smaller scale Cadian uh, Shock Troopers almost with um, leather leather armor rather than uh, flak <clears throat> uh, armor plates and shoulder pads and stuff. I just find it interesting that you know these guys are so iconic and then you've got another um, Imperial Guard Regiment that they, they've done on their own and looks completely different. I kind of wish that Forge World would add models for like the, the Valhallen range or or the Talarn. Okay, Abaddon Black next. Because there's so many ranges out there that, that could use some some of that Forge World magic. Alright, what we're doing with the Abaddon Black is we're we're painting on these uh no idea what these are. These wires or straps or uh, whatever's holding the model to the or the saddle to the horse there. You can see that I'm, uh, I've put this model on a, or this model was already on a decorative resin base, and um, I'm not using my, my cork, which I usually use, and I think I was just kind of in a hurry, I wanted to get this all done, and I didn't want to stick it to the cork. I think at one point I thought, oh, I'll just pop it on a cork, and I, I tried to, but it kept falling off, the post attack wasn't sticking to it, so... Um, yeah, but I, I usually do use that that piece of cork. All right, now what I'm doing is I'm painting in black the brass rod that you use for the uh, spear. And again, these guys are made, made to be interchangeable and used to count as uh, <clears throat> rough riders. So uh, the the fluff with the rough riders, and usually they are known by the dryad bark next by the iconic Attilan Rough Rider models as these uh, cavalry horsemen who come in with this explosive tipped spear and they charge and they uh, the spear explodes they come they have this devastating charge and then uh, they ditch the spear and they they fight hand to hand and up close and personal and uh, the Death Corps of Creek Death Riders I guess are the Death Corps equivalent <clears throat> Dryad Bark is a fantastic color because it's dark brown. It's a really uh, beautiful chocolatey dark brown. And so I use it a lot when I'm painting my Imperial Guard models because it contrasts the light colors really well. And especially when you've got a horse like this, we're painting the horse in this light 
um, cream yellowy blonde color the uh, dark brown is a great accent color now if I was going to paint my horse dark brown say I wanted to paint the horse in a dryad bark dark brown then maybe I would go with a different color for the boots so that it sticks out from uh, the rest of the model I would go with like a black leather shiny glossy black leather or something else and now we're painting on the uh, little pouches and collar of the horse again if I was doing a, a dark brown dryad bark colored skin tone for the horse then I would probably go with a, a light gas mask collar all of this would be um, different complementary colors just so that it pops off against the, the color that you're going with Yeah, I was reading the Lexicanum and the, the wiki, Warhammer wiki for this to uh, get ready for this video and it's interesting reading about the tactics that these uh, cavalry use because uh, it's very reminiscent of real world cavalry tactics in the, I guess, the early 20th century except that instead of lances you had them leading uh, in World War I. I remember that movie War Horse where uh, Loki and Sherlock were leading the charge with sabers and uh, going right into the the machine gun fire and I was like oh my gosh so in uh, Death Corps fluff the thing that makes them unique is that in in the fluff the Death Corps of Krieg the world of Krieg was completely destroyed by radiation in order to uh, fight this civil war that the people were having rebelling against the Imperium so they uh, completely just nuked the entire planet the loyalist death corps of Krieg uh, Colonel Colonel Yurtin um, set off all these radioactive nukes and just turned the the world of Krieg into this radioactive wasteland so in the beginning, they did a lot of this just trench warfare, uh, and anytime they would go up to fight on the surface, they would use these vehicles like uh, chimeras, Lehman Russ, tanks, uh, artillery, heavy stuff like that. And um, what happened though was, <laughs> it was such an interesting read as, oh, Stegon, Stegodon scale green now to paint the horse's blanket, the blanket um, right under the saddle. As the war goes on and the people who know how to drive the tanks and maintain the vehicles and all of that, as, as they get killed off and uh, are not getting resupplied as quickly as they need to, what the army, or the Astra Militarum forces of the Death Corps do is that they go back to their you know, ancient history of when they used to have cavalry charges and and all this kind of stuff so they would uh, retrain their infantry to form cavalry regiments and to ride these uh, giant vat grown um, genetically engineered horses so the horses themselves because of the uh, terrible nuclear war on Krieg were engineered by scientists and they were kind of uh, grown using DNA from the horses that were on ancient Terra on old Earth, so the horses that we know today, and um, they were given these like very mean uh, dispositions and really bad temper and highly made highly aggressive, and um, that way they would be uh, perfect mounts for the Death Corps of Creed cavalry officers. And uh, I don't know why they've had gas masks, probably because 40k, awesome, everything needs a, a gas mask if you're fighting in the Death Corps of Krieg, but um, yeah, this is, it's just amazing and awesome to think that um, the Death Corps themselves, themselves, the uh, army soldiers, they don't even have names or identities, they're just bred to fight and they're trained and they're indoctrinated and they're brainwashed and uh, in almost every other yeah every other Imperial Guard or Astra Militarum story you've got 
heroes, right? You've got individuals, characters fighting in the army of the Imperium of Man. In any Death Corps of Creed story, though, these individual soldiers, they don't have identities. They don't have names or families. They're grown using this um, technology called the Vitae Womb, which uh, nobody knows what it is or how it works or anything like that, but it allows Krieg to manufacture soldiers, breed them, get them ready to fight, and uh, kind of brainwashes them so that when they join the Astra Militarum, they're supposedly really, really mean and dour and, and uh, resolved to die for the Emperor. Alright, next, Dumbo Brown for the saddle. And uh, the two bags on either side. You've got two leather bags, so Dumbo Brown is a fantastic color for, for dark red leather, a rich red leather. And um, it's, it's, it's really fantastic as an idea, as a concept. Uh, it's just <laughs> hard to find uh, or to make any good stories because the, they're not even men anymore. You know, even space marines, they still have human uh, emotions, but their space marines are basically genetically altered humans that have been, again, brainwashed, trained, indoctrinated to fight and die for the emperor, but they still have personality and individuality, and they, they still, uh, each of the legions has their own character, and uh, with the Death Corps of Krieg, their character is that they are legion, they are numberless, they, are, they do not have names, they have serial numbers, um, <laughs> all they do is stand at attention, march, dig trenches, uh, they, don't, they don't choke, they don't laugh, they don't burn off steam. They are just these uh, consummate grim dark soldiers, and um, I I love them. I think that's hilarious. It's just that uh, it's such a it's a hard concept to wrap your head around if if you're used to uh, or if you want to play the war game and you're like, oh, these guys are awesome. What's their story? Um, what what do they do? And basically, all they do is fight. They fight and they they go off. They they fly to another world and they fight some more and. Um, that is it. That is all they do. And it's funny to think that um, their ho these horses in, you know, in real life, these horses are animals and they're companions and they, uh, and they have personalities as well. And in, in the Death Corps of Krieg, let Belcher now for all the silver bits, in the Death Corps of Krieg, they are basically just used to uh, mount these charges and to fight. They're, they're not companions, they don't have personalities, they don't, um, they don't care about their horses because as soon as one of them breaks or falls down or, or whatever, they will um, go on to the next horse. Horse monster. And even though we like to think that, oh, or, or we, we learn that that's kind of how they were also back in World War I, you know, they had to be kind of, kind of heartless and cruel to their animals in order to um, not get attached or whatever, um, it just, Warhammer 40,000 just takes it to the next level. So, uh, the models are beautiful though, and they have great height. I remember the first time I went on the Forge World website, and I was like, why would I pay all this money for these to get, like, you know, just only so many models when I can get a bunch of Cadian shock troopers or catechins or whatever plastic figures at my local store. And uh, at this point, you know, there comes a there comes a time in your in your career in the hobby when you either say like, yes, I will put down some money and I will get some pre heresy marines and build them up, or I will buy that Warhound Titan, or I will buy that Reaver Titan or that Whatever, and then, you know, you look at the, the Death Corps of Krieg, and that's how it all starts. The beginning of the end. Next thing you know, you're sleeping in a gutter, picking through trash, trying to get enough cans to take them to recycling so you can buy another Death Rider. That's kind of depressing. Just like the Death Corps of Krieg! depressing 
tower. If you go on 1D 4chan, my gosh, I'm rambling so much. There's this hilarious story, short story compilation called Love and Krieg. You should definitely check it out. It's a good read. Okay, so with silver, let's do a little bit of actual hobbying tips. With lead belcher, because it's a, a, a base paint, the the pigment is going to be thicker, the color is going to be thicker. You definitely want to make sure that you don't dip your brush too far into the paint. You don't want it to dry in the ferrule between the bristles and the metal binding for your brush because that is what will ruin your brushes if you get any kind of paint, especially a base paint, in uh, too deep then it is not going to end up well for your brushes. So you want to keep your brushes at a, at a, a, a nice point and uh, you want to make sure that when you are dipping them into the paint usually I use a, a wet palette but I think for the, the lead voucher I just kind of kept it open next to me uh, which was probably not the best thing to do you want to make sure that your paint is thinned down even just a little bit with some water a drop or two of water into your into your paint just to uh, thin it down a little bit make it a little bit easier to to go on you don't want it to clump you don't want it too thick Okay, now I'm painting the uh, rebreather unit in the back here with a little piping. Most of these models also have a pistol, so they're, the butt of the pistol is sticking out of the holster. I usually hit that with a lead belcher as well as the entrenching tool, the shovel, there on the right. Next I'm hitting all of the metal on the back of the breastplate, the breastplate, and the piping for the rebreather unit. The Death Riders, their respirator unit is uh, hooked up to the back of their breastplate. Just like the Grenadiers, um, most Death Corps of Krieg models have the rebreather unit in the front, um, but because they're using these breastplates, they have them in the back. And uh, another interesting piece of the history of the Death Corps of Krieg is that these breastplates that they wear are mostly ornamental and um, they're just there to, to look intimidating and awesome and they're, they're, the way that they fight the Death Riders what they'll do is they'll charge into the flank and they'll lower their spears kaboom they've got like grenades on the end of their spear tips designed to explode and at that point their spears are useless so they will drop the spears they will pull out uh, their sabers you see they've got uh, this guy's got a saber on his left side so he's right-handed because he'll reach across and pull out that saber and he's also got a last pistol and they'll use both of those although the uh, Wikipedia or the not the Wikipedia the 40k wiki says that usually at that point um, the last pistol in that holster there on the left side is usually useless so because they've got to hold on to the reins of their horse with their left hand, if they're right-handed, the Death Rider usually has to choose between if he wants to use his saber or his um, or his last pistol. Steel Legion Drab now for the face mask and the bedroll. I think that's interesting because um, normally as as a, a person who does not want to get into any kind of close quarters fight, if I can avoid it, I would think that a pistol would be the easier way to fight on horseback. It's a ranged weapon, uh, you just aim it and you shoot and uh, pull the trigger. And uh, to me, I feel like it would be less distracting and require less work than having to whip out your saber and um, and use that. Okay, the entrenching tool's got a cover there on the tip of the shovel, so I um, paint that Steel Legion Drab as well as right here on the back there you've got a sleeping roll, so we're gonna paint that with Steel Legion Drab. Okay, so
after getting the sleeping bag there. What are we doing next? Dryad bark. This is going to go onto um, the straps on the canister there, as well as the uh, straps on the bedroll just to create a little bit of a difference in color to make both of the colors kind of pop a little bit more. And you can see how nicely that Seraphim Sepia tried on the horse there. It looks really, really nice. So again, dried bark there on the straps of the sleeping roll. And now uh, it looks like I'm just cleaning up the straps that have got the saber latched onto his belt and the reins. Oh yeah, there's this uh, last pistol holster right there on the right hip. So that's getting dry at bark as well. Oh hello, I forgot to uh, paint the gloves dry at bark when I was painting the boots. Again, hit the reins in the hand, and yeah, now I'm just going along the lines to make sure that the reins are all properly colored as well. Lewis, I think the master fell asleep. Ah, that's perfect. Now we can invite some fine hot ladies over to the house. Oh, I wouldn't do that. We wouldn't want the master to wake up and find the place in utter chaos. Ah, I think he's waking up. Okay, and that's Mornfang Brown. Uh, Mornfang Brown is gonna go along the front. Painting the belt. <laughs> Was Lewis here, Igor? Oh no, Master. It just always smells like death around here. Hmm. Mornfang Brown is also being used to paint the straps on the horse's rebreather mask. Why does the nice horsey have a gas mask on, Master? Because it's 40k, Igor. And because it's awesome! I'm so tired, you guys. <laughs> it's 3.20 in the morning. Ugh, trying to finish this Death Curve Krieg project. Crazy! Okay, what are we doing now? Now we're going to mix our dark iron color. Two parts Abaddon Black to one part Lead Belcher. This is what is um, you would use your, your wet palette for, definitely. Um, just because your wet palette will allow you to mix a good deal of it and it'll stay usable. That's kind of the purpose of having a wet palette besides mixing colors is to leave the paint uh, usable. I think once I mixed this dark 
iron color or I mixed some kind of color with two different paints and uh, I used it and then I, I think I was getting really really tired so I was like oh, I'm done painting I'm gonna go to sleep and then the next morning I came back to do a little bit more painting and uh, the, the color the mix was still usable on my wet palette of course I had a little bit of water at the bottom which uh, you're supposed to have just a little bit of water so it doesn't dry up and the parchment paper which was super important um, it was just it was still usable and I was really happy because it allows you to save money on paints and uh, in the end everybody's a winner so the place that you're gonna paint with this dark iron or the pieces are the uh, shoulder pads the armor plates on the back of the gloves and the helmet Okay, at this point, looks like um, I put a little bit more paint on my brush, and what are we doing next? I think I'm just looking at the model, thinking to myself, oh, where can I paint? I think I'm going to be getting into the gold. There it is, Baltazar gold. So you've got a bunch of imperial eagles as well as gold details. So for the the sad, um, saber, I'm sorry, you've got the uh, tip right there in the back of the of the sheath. You've got an imperial eagle down the side, and you've got an imperial eagle on that oxygen canister. You've got the I guess the pommel of the sword. And the uh, the wrist guard there. So all of it, all of it's getting Balthazar gold. There should be also a little Imperial Eagle right there on the back. Yeah. So Next you've got like a little skull, or the watch commander has like a winged skull on the front. And I don't know if this is exactly correct, but I decided to add these gold details right to the front of the horse's rebreather mask. And to paint the collar, the double-headed eagle icon on the collar. And just like in my other Death Corps of Krieg, uh, tutorials the Imperial Eagle on the front of the helmet as well as the little connecting screw from his gas mask to the tube also get Balthazar Geld. Oh, I forgot, there's also a little Imperial Eagle on the left side of the breastplate. There's an Imperial Eagle on the right shoulder pad. And uh, I always paint the little gold, uh, the little skull pin on the right side of the collar, gold as well. All right, next we've got Abaddon Black all by itself. This is gonna be used to kind of paint some of the lining areas that uh, do not have any paint in them yet. So this is usually like around the neck or also what we use black for is to paint the eye lenses to create a very alien, inhuman look to the gas masks. I've seen some great examples of Death Corp Krieg painted up where the islands are an actual color, like blue or green. 
um, to kind of denote the color of glass, but I just decided to leave it black. Okay, Mornfang Brown. The little strap at the top of the horse's gas mask, I paint Mornfang Brown just for a little lick of red, uh, reddish brown color. Now we're going to get onto the flag. So you can really paint this however you want, but I decided to go with the color scheme that's kind of in the book, and that is a red and gold flag color scheme. And by book, I mean the uh, Siege of Frax Imperial Armor books. Which, I mean, if you want to just look for the artwork, just type in Death Corps of Krieg and just go to the wiki page or the Lexicanum page or even any of the images on uh, online and you'll see some great reference materials for your color schemes. So with Caliban Green, I'm painting the bottom half of these pennant flags and Corn Red is going to be the top half. So the corn red is going right on the top. Now, um, some of these flags, depending on which Death Rider model you're painting, you can kind of see how this one is just kind of folded in on itself and just lazily just kind of hanging down. There are some pennant flags where the flag is like completely hung down and straight, or it's like flapping in the wind as the guy's charging, almost it looks like. And so it really depends. Uh, there's no real quick and easy way to paint these uh, pennant flags and the tricky part is taking some Abaddon black and doing the edge of the flag as as best as you can Okay, and now the rim is getting worked on with the Abaddon black. And um, the reason why we use that black for the trim is that it will really make the red and the green pop. Uh, it's always important to just go that little extra mile to achieve the finish that you want. Okay, it looks good. Okay, uh, rust gray again. This is to um, build up off of the uniform color, which is the fang. So after uh, wiping off most of the rust gray. I mean, just look at that. It looks so good. Uh, the colors just blend really, really nicely. Rust gray building up on the fang is just a beautiful combination. I really like painting the um, Death Corps of Krieg uniform. It's a lot of fun. And holy moly, this video is 42 and a half minutes long. Thank you so much, you guys, for putting up with me. Pretty sure I dozed off at some point during this video. It's a hard knock life, master. Telling me, Igor, you're telling me.
and now we're going on to the Agrax Earth Shade Wash. So we're hitting everything uh, except for the horsey. You don't want to hit the horsey. You want to give it a little bit of an Agrax Earth Shade, but uh, mainly what we're doing is we're hitting the rider. We want him to be a nicely shaded and highlighted model. We want the horse to stay nice and pale. Um, after putting a lot of the wash onto the, the, the rider itself, what I'm just doing is taking a little bit and I'm using it as a, almost like a glaze on the horse. So I'm not dipping the Agrax Earth Shade all over the horse skin. I'm putting it there on the mask, spreading it out, and using the leftover as a glaze to uh, add a little bit of, of sh shading to the horse while still keeping that um, blonde seraphim sepia look. Okay, so we're finishing up here. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. So thanks for watching everybody. Looks like we are nearing the end. And um, we will see you in the next video. Hopefully when, I'm, uh, when I've had a couple more Red Bulls in me. Thanks for watching everybody. And um, hope all of your projects are going well. We'll see you in the next video. Latest players!